Hello class, this is Sir Kenny, your teacher for the day and welcome back to STM005 or General Chemistry 1. Today we will talk about module 15 which is exploring limiting reactant and percent yield. Before we delve in, let us go to our objectives. So by the end of the lesson, you can say that yes, I can determine the limiting reagent of a reaction and yes, I can calculate theoretical, actual, and percent yield of a reaction. First, let us define what limiting reactants and excess reactants are. When we say limiting reactant, this is the reactant that is totally consumed after a chemical reaction. Excess reactants, however, are reactants that still have some left after a chemical reaction. So, ibig sabihin nito, pag sinabi nating limiting reactant, siya yung nauubos or nako-completely used up sa chemical reaction. Ibig sabihin, kapag naubos na siya, mag stop na agad yung chemical reaction. So, that means siya ang magdidictate kung magpo-proceed pa ba or mag stop na ang chemical reaction. Samantalang sa excess reactant, these are the reactants that still have some left. Ibig sabihin, may mga natitira pa. Tapos na yung chemical reaction, may mga naiwan pa. Ito na yung mga hindi na magagamit na mga reactant in a chemical reaction. For example, how to make a baby. Now, in order to make a baby, you will need one head, one body, and four limbs. So, if you have 10 heads, 9 bodies, and 40 limbs, how many babies can you make with a complete set of body parts? So, the answer is 9. Bakit 9? Bakit hindi 10? That is because yung body natin ay siyam lang. Ibig sabihin, mauubos na yung body samantalang yung head tapos yung limbs meron pang naiwan. So, that means, ang excess natin ay the heads and the limbs, at yung body naman ang ating limiting reagent kasi naubos na siya. Siya yung nag-dictate na mag stop na ang production. Let us have this as an example. We have aluminum plus fluorine to produce aluminum fluoride. Remember that fluorine is a diatomic element so therefore lagi siyang merong 2 as a subscript. Ang given natin ay we have 3 moles of aluminum and we have 4 moles of fluorine. And how many moles of aluminum fluoride and how much in grams of the aluminum fluoride will be produced after the reaction? Now, the first step is for us to balance the chemical equation. If you need a review on this, go back to our module number 12, which talks about the different types of chemical reaction and how to balance chemical equations. So, in order for us to determine which one is a limiting reagent, we have to divide the number of moles of the given by its coefficient. So, dito kasi nagkataon na ang given natin ay nasa mole na. So, for aluminum, 3 moles. For fluorine, 4 moles. Next, we have to divide them by their coefficient. Ang unit ng mga coefficient natin, yung mga binalance natin ay mole. So, for aluminum, 3 moles divided by 2 mole kasi ito yung ating coefficient. So, 2 mole, cancel mole, you will be left with 1.5. Next, for fluorine, 4 moles ang given divided by 3 mole kasi yun yung sa ating balancing. It will be equal to 1.3333. Kung sino yung mas mababa sa kanila kapag dadalawa lang sila or kung tatlo man yung ating reactants, Kung sino yung pinakamababa sa kanila, siya ang magiging limiting reagent. So, ibig sabihin, mako-completely used up na siya at siya yung magdidictate kung mag stop na ang chemical reaction. Now, let us solve for the amount in mole of the aluminum fluoride which will be produced. Ang gagamitin natin sa lahat ng computation ay yung ating limiting reagent which is in this case, fluorine. So, get the given. Ito yung given natin. Pansin niyo kahit na 4 moles si fluorine at 3 moles lang si aluminum, ang naging limiting natin or yung mauubos ay yung si fluorine. So, it doesn't mean na porket mas mababa yung value nung isang given kesa sa doon sa isa, ay siya na agad ang magiging limiting reagent. Nakadepende pa rin yan sa ating computation. We have 4 moles of fluorine as a given. 
Next, we get the stoichiometric equivalence ng ating fluorine at ng aluminum fluoride. Kagaya ng ating discussion on day 13, nakadepende ang ating stoichiometric equivalence sa ating balancing. Ang dalawang substances na involved dito ay si fluorine kasi siya yung limiting reagent at si aluminum fluoride kasi siya yung hinahanap natin. So ito ang ating mga substances involved. Now, in the stoichiometric equivalence, kukunin natin yung kanilang balancing. So for every 3 moles of fluorine, makakaproduce tayo ng 2 moles of aluminum fluoride. Or sa dalawang moles ng aluminum fluoride, noong tayong 3 moles of fluorine. So we are going to get the value of these ones. Now, the unit of our denominator should be the same as our given. So, yung mole of fluorine dito, dapat yun din ang denominator natin dito in order for us to be able to cancel. Lalagyan natin sa baba yung 3 moles of fluorine at sa taas naman yung moles ng aluminum fluoride. So, 4 mole of fluorine divided by 3 times 2, you will get 2.6666 mole of aluminum fluoride. So this is the amount of the aluminum fluoride which will be produced in a chemical reaction. E paano naman yung amount in grams? Now, using our formula sa pagcompute ng mole, ng weight, ng molecular weight, we can determine the amount in grams of the aluminum fluoride which will be produced. Nawawala ang mass of substance in grams. So number of mole times molecular weight. So this is our number of mole of the aluminum fluoride times the molecular weight of the aluminum fluoride. For fluorine, that is 19 times 3. For aluminum, it is 26.98. So ipag-aad natin yon, you will get 83.98 grams of aluminum fluoride per 1 mole of aluminum fluoride. Dapat uli, ang ating denominator ay kapareho nung sa ating given. So, ilagay natin sa baba yung mole of aluminum fluoride para ma-cancel. So, 2.6666 divided by 1 times 83.98, this will be equal to 223.94 grams of aluminum fluoride. Kagaya na makikita nyo dito, ang ating mole ay dapat 4 decimal places in order for our values to be accurate. Everything else, sa grams, sa percent, sa ating atomic weight, Two decimal places. So ngayon alam na natin kung gaano karami yung na-produce sa aluminum fluoride in mole and in grams. Ngayon naman, how much of the excess reagent was used up in the chemical reaction? Gaano karami yung nagamit? Sa lahat ng computation, ang gagamitin pa rin natin ay yung limiting reagent. So, the given is formula of fluorine. Next, the stoichiometric equivalence of aluminum and fluorine. Kasi si aluminum naman ngayon ang ating excess. So, we will get the stoichiometric equivalence of our limiting, which is fluorine, and our excess, which is aluminum. So, for every 2 moles of aluminum, there are 3 moles of fluorine. So, i-arrange ulit natin yan na kung saan magkapareho ang unit ng ating denominator at ng given. So, mole of fluorine, mole of fluorine. So, for mole of fluorine, ito yung given natin. Divided by 3 moles of fluorine, cancel moles of fluorine, times 2 moles of aluminum. This will be equal to 2.6666 moles of aluminum. How much of the excess reagent was left after the chemical reaction? Gano naman karami yung hindi nagamit? In order for us to compute for this, we will get the original amount minus the used amount. So, 3 moles of aluminum, ito yung ating excess reagent, 3 moles of aluminum, minus the used amount, which is 2.6666 mole of aluminum. This will be equal to 0.3334 moles of aluminum na hindi nagamit sa chemical reaction. Okay? Let us proceed. Ngayon naman ang given ay grams. Both sodium and chlorine amounts to 100 grams. And the chemical reaction is sodium plus chlorine to produce sodium chloride. First step, balance the chemical equation. In order to balance this, maglagay ng 2 sa Na at 2 sa NaCl. Chlorine laging may 2 dito kasi isa rin siya sa mga pitong diatomic elements. The next step is for us to determine the limiting reagent. The formula for this one is small divided by coefficient. Yun nga lang kasi ang given natin ay grams. We have to convert this one into mole. 
So in order for us to compute for the moles, ito yung ating nawawala. So it is mass of the substance divided by molecular weight. So unahin natin si sodium, 100 grams divided by 22.99 grams per mole. Ito yung nasa predict table of element. So this will be equal to 4.3497 mole. So nakuha na natin yung mole ngayon. Pansin nyo, color-coded sila. Nakuha na natin yung mole. Next step is to divide the mole with the balancing or the coefficient of Na. So, divided by 2 moles, makakansal yung mole. This will be equal to 2.1749. Tapos na tayo sa Na. Let us go to chlorine. 100 grams din daw si chlorine. Next step is for us to determine the number of moles. So, mass of substance divided by molecular weight. This is the weight given 100 grams of chlorine divided by 35.45 grams per mole. This is the atomic weight of chlorine. Yun nga lang kasi diatomic element siya. So we have to multiply the atomic weight of chlorine by 2. So this will be equal to 1.4104 mole. Color-coded uli siya. Ito yung mole. Next step is to divide the number of mole to its coefficient. Walang nakalagay dito kay chlorine. Yun nga lang understood na 1 ang kanyang coefficient. So divided by 1 mole, cancel mole, you will be left with 1.4104. Kung sino yung mas mababa uli, siya ang ating limiting reagent at siya yung maging basehan natin sa lahat ng computation. Okay, now I am going to introduce to you two types of computation. The first one is the traditional method. Ito yung ginawa natin kanina and in day 13. We will omit all what we've done so far and then just get the grams of the limiting reagent. So, at least alam natin kung sino ang ating limiting reagent. Kukunin natin yung amount in grams niya. So, this is the weight of the limiting reagent. Next is to calculate the mole of the limiting reagent. Kukunin natin yung kanyang amount in mole. So, in one mole of chlorine, there is 35.45 grams of chlorine times 2 kasi diatomic element. Next step is for us to get the stoichiometric equivalence. Ang given natin ay chlorine, ang hinahanap ay NaCl. So, tingnan natin yung kanilang coefficient. So, for every 1 mole of chlorine, there are 2 moles of NaCl. Or, 2 moles of NaCl is stoichiometrically equivalent to 1 mole of chlorine. We have to arrange this na kung saan, dapat kung ano yung unit ng nasa numerator, yun yung nasa unit ng denominator sa susunod na step para makancel. Next step is to get the molecular weight of the desired product. Si Na, 22.99. Si Chlorine ay 35.45. Ipag-add sila, you will get 58.44 grams of NaCl per 1 mole of NaCl. Kagaya nung kanina, Make sure na ang denominator natin dito ay kapareho ng numerator doon sa kabila para makancel. So that means 100 grams of chlorine divided by the product of 35.45 times 2 times 1 divided by 1 times 2 divided by 1 times 58.44. Lahat ng mga nasa numerator multiply, lahat ng mga nasa denominator divide. You will get 164.85 grams of sodium chloride. So that is how we compute using the traditional method. Next, I am going to introduce to you a new method. And then we are going to compare the computation sa traditional method at sa bagong method na ipapakita ko sa inyo. In the new method, we get the computed value of our limiting reagent. And then we are going to multiply that with the coefficient and the molecular weight of the product. So, this will be the formula for the new method. Limiting reagent, color-coded ulit, the coefficient and the molecular weight. So the value of our limiting reagent ay 1.4104. Ito yun. Next, ang hinahanap natin ay yung kay sodium chloride. We are going to multiply the value of the limiting reagent with the coefficient of the product, which is 2 mole. And then the molecular weight of our product, which is 58.44 grams per mole. So, cancel mole, you will be left with grams. So, this will be equal to 164.85 grams of NaCl. Mapapansin ninyo na pareho lang ang ating compute na value. 
Yun nga lang dito kasi sa new method, mas pinabilis siya or mas pinadali siya kasi in this case, kapag ginamit natin yung value yun ng limiting reagent, matatapos na natin yung kalahati. Ito, tapos na tayo dito sa part na to kapag ang ginamit natin ay yung amount ng limiting reagent. Now that you know the two computations, kayo na ang bahala kung ano yung mas gagamitin ninyo. Kung nakasanayan nyo na yung traditional method, then you can make use of that. Kung gusto nyo naman ng bagong method, then you can also make use of that. Depende na yun kung ano yung nakasanayan ninyo or kung ano yung mas madali para sa inyo. Paano naman kapag ang hinahanap ay yung mole lang ng product, hindi yung weight. So that means you can remove the molecular weight dito para ang makukuha lang ay yung mole ng product. So for example, how many moles of NaCl will be produced in this chemical reaction? Kunin natin yung value ng ating limiting reagent, which is 1.4104, at i-multiply lang natin yun sa coefficient ng product na hinahanap natin, which is 2 mole. So therefore, 1.4104 times 2 mole, ang lalabas doon ay yung mole lang ng ating product. Kung sakali na ang hinahanap ay yung mole lang ng product, huwag mo nang isama yung molecular weight. Now, in this case, ang hinahanap kasi ay yung weight in grams ng product, kaya ang formula natin ay limiting reagent times coefficient and molecular weight ng product. Pero pag yung mole lang, limiting reagent times coefficient lang. Ngayon naman, how much of the excess reactant was used up in the chemical reaction? Kagaya nung nauna, ang gagamitin pa rin natin pang solve ay yung value ng limiting reagent. So, 1.4104 times yung ating excess reactant naman ang hanapin ngayon. Now, in this case, ang excess natin ay si sodium. So, kukunin natin yung coefficient ni sodium and then the atomic weight of sodium, which is 22.99 grams per mole. So, this is for the excess reactant or kung gaano karami yung nagamit sa chemical reaction doon sa excess reactant. So, 1.4104 times 2 mole times 22.99 grams per mole. This will be equal to 64.85 grams of sodium which was used in the chemical reaction. Lastly, how much of the excess reactant is left? After the reaction, gaano karami yung hindi nagamit sa chemical reaction? So, it is original amount of the excess reagent minus the amount of excess reagent na nagamit. So, the original amount is 100 grams minus the nagamit which is 64.85 grams. This will be equal to 35.15 grams of sodium left after the chemical reaction. Ito yung hindi nagamit na amount ng excess reagent. So try this one out for yourself. We have the equation carbon dioxide plus water to produce carbohydrate in the form of glucose plus oxygen. So the first step is to always balance the chemical equation. And then you can proceed in answering the following questions. Now you can pause the video and then compute for yourself and then resume the video once you are done to check your own work. Next is we have your answers. So these are our answers. You can compare your work to the answers and then determine if you have answered correctly or on which part did you not answer correctly. As what I have always said, sa lahat ng mga computation na discussion, it would be best if you are going to answer along because practice makes progress and you learn best by doing things on your own. If you got everything correct, then congratulations. You can now proceed to the next topic. If not, then you can review our lesson and then try answering again. Next, we go to percent yield. Percent yield is the ratio of the actual yield to the theoretical yield expressed as a percent. It is the one that is used as a measure of efficiency to the chemical reaction. Ano naman yung theoretical yield? Ito yung ginagawa natin. This is the one obtained using computations. It is the maximum amount of product that can be produced from a given amount of reactant. A chemical reaction rarely produces the theoretical yield of the product. So, hindi lahat ng computation nakukuha yung 100% ng theoretical yield. 
The actual yield is the amount of product produced when the chemical reaction is carried out in an experiment. So, na-obtain lang natin yung actual yield in an experiment. So, this is our formula. Actual yield, percent yield, and then theoretical yield. This is how we compute for the percent yield. Percent yield is equal to actual yield divided by theoretical yield. And since it is percent, kailang natin i-multiply sa 100 para makuha yung percent. So, percent yield is actual yield over theoretical yield times 100. Paano naman kapag ang nawawala ay yung actual yield? So, it will become percent yield times theoretical yield. Yun nga lang, we have to remove the percent sa ating percent yield. Kailangan natin siyang i-divide sa 100 para makuha yung value. And then we are going to multiply that with the theoretical yield para makuha yung actual yield. Paano naman kapag yung theoretical yield ang nawawala? It will be actual yield divided by percent yield. Yun nga lang kailangan uli nating alisin yung percent, so divided by 100 yung ating percent yield. So theoretical yield is equal to actual yield divided by percent yield divided by 100. In relation to the computation above, ito yung kinumpute natin kanina regarding sodium chloride. What would be the percent yield if 129.32 grams of salt was produced in an experiment? So we have to get the given first. The given are actual yield, ito yung nakuha sa experiment, it is 129.32 grams. The theoretical yield, ito yung galing sa computation, it is 164.85 grams. So in order for us to determine the percent yield, nawawala ang percent yield, so AY over TY. At since percent siya times 100, so percent yield is equal to actual yield divided by theoretical yield times 100. So this is equal to 78.45%. So that means ang efficiency ng ating nakuha in an experiment compared sa ating computation ay 78.45%. Another example, what is the theoretical yield if the weight of the product obtained in an experiment is 32.38 grams and the percent yield is 76.85%? Now, ang hinahanap naman dito ay yung ating theoretical yield. Let us get a given. Percent yield, ito yung ating given, 76.85%. Actual yield ang nakuha daw sa experiment ay 32.38 grams. What is the theoretical yield? So, ito yung TY, nawawala. So, it is AY over percent yield. So, AY over percent yield. Yun nga lang, kailangan natin alisin yung percent. So, we have to divide the value of percent yield by 100. So, 32.38 grams divided by 76.85%, i-divide natin to sa 100 para maalis yung percent. This will be equal to 32.38 grams divided by 0 0.7685. Our answer is 42.13 grams. So, bakit hindi laging 100% ang ating percentage yield? There are factors that may have affected doon sa ating experiment kaya hindi natin nakukuha yung 100% ng theoretical yield. Pwedeng nagkaroon ng contamination, pwedeng nagkamali ng pagsukat, pwedeng mali yung ating sukatan. So those are only a few of the instances or the factors na kung saan pwedeng mag-contribute kung bakit hindi 100% ang nakukuha natin sa theoretical yield. One way na kung saan ginagamit natin yung percentage yield sa ating pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay ay para malaman natin kung gano'ng ka-effective ang isang bagay o hindi. Now, there are many steps kung saan pwedeng gawin ang isang bagay. Yun nga lang kasi, kahit na iba-iba yung steps na yun, iba-iba rin yung kanilang efficiency or kung gano sila kabilis na gawin or kung gano sila kadaling gawin. The higher the percentage yield or the higher the efficiency, the better. So, to end our lesson, you can try summarizing on your own the following questions. What are limiting and excess reagents? Which of the two should be used in computing for the value of the other substances in a chemical equation? And then lastly, what is the relationship between the reaction yield and the law of conservation of mass? Now you can carry on your work by answering module 15.